Welcome to Village Expeditions. This is a show where we take ordinary city dwelling people and see how well they can cope in the remote village communities of Kenya and Africa as a whole. They will undertake everyday activities and try to see if their survival skills are up to the task when given real challenges. These people have lived in the city all their lives and now it is up to them to try and prove their worth in the harshest living conditions known to man. This is Village Expeditions. In today's episode, we visit with Miriam Ogutu, who is a journalist, a writer, and a mother. My name is Miriam Ogutu. I am a, a journalist, and uh, I've been in the media industry for quite a while. I'm a mother of one. My son is 11 years old. And what inspires me is people, because I find pleasure or sort of a level of satisfaction even in my journalistic work. I like talking to people so all the nine years I've been in the media I've been a talk show host and also a producer and an editor. Miriam has lived in the city for most of her life and has enjoyed the many comforts that city life has to offer. I wake up in the morning, I am a Christian, I pray, and then at around 5.40 I wake my son, I get him ready for school. The bus picks him at around 6.20, but for me family is, is my number one um, job, especially being a mother. I pride myself in being a mom. Growing up I was very quiet and very reserved. So I would read a lot and my mind would travel through these novels, through these books I would read and the shows I would watch sometimes. So I've always been curious about traveling. That has been something I've always wanted to do. I don't even know where I'm going. And I can't tell you, last night I couldn't sleep because naturally I'm a very hands-on person. I don't want to say I love being in control, but I, I always love to know that I'm able to, to contain a situation or to know. So for me to sit here and to travel to a place where I've not been, I don't have the information, I don't know what to expect, I couldn't sleep last night. <laughs> so I'm... Um, I'm not the most open-minded person you'll ever meet in your life, but I'm a curious person. So that should allow me to just go there with an open heart. I say, my mind is not quite open, but my heart is open. The destination has been kept a secret. You know what? I'll try to enjoy the ride. Yeah, and hopefully uh, it's not going to be quite a culture shock for me. But with an open heart, I think. Oh, so the travel days here we've been about 15 minutes on the road um, almost leaving the city so we are on Mombasa Road, so I'm taking a guess that place we are going is somewhere. I don't know where we are moving and writing from the Mombasa Road, or if at all we are going to Mombasa, I have no idea. But so far, so good, and we are just leaving the city behind. So, yeah, I'm actually excited. Today, I'm excited. Yeah. Bracing for the long trip ahead, the convoy stops for lunch and to assess the situation. here for a quick bite before uh, we proceed with the rest of the, the journey. Miriam is still unaware by this moment where she will end up or what waits for her at the end of the journey. We are at Kitengela now. Kitengela is in Machamis County, if I'm not wrong. 
It isn't until she sees a familiar road sign, that Miriam realizes that she may be headed deep into the heart of Maasai land. Such a beautiful view. This is the heart of Maasai land. Oh, so we just arrived at Ilbilsil. It's a small town just past uh, Kajiado town, but still we're in Kajiado County. So apparently we have arrived, we are almost to where I'm supposed to be spending the night. We are waiting for our, our point man in somewhere in one of these villages. I don't know. So, I'm going to go to Nairobi. I'm going to go to Nairobi. I'm going to go Yeah. Asante. So, I'm going to go to Nairobi. Lake Shore and your uh, the village. Okay, for those who are watching who don't understand uh, Kiswahili, he's taking me to a village called Lengishon. Later that night, Miriam arrives at her destination and is welcomed by the locals. So I've just arrived to the homestead that will be hosting me tonight. So I'm here to meet my host. I think she should be here shortly. It's 7 p.m. exactly. So it's been, we left Nairobi at around 2 p.m. So it's not been quite a long journey, but I'm happy we are right safely. So yeah. So uh, this is the Manyata I'll be spending my night today. I've never been to Mass Island before. I've never slept in such a, a hut before. This is where she will spend the night and following <laughs> hours. I'm sorry, Sana. Asante, Sana. Asante. Oh, so this will be my bed for tonight, and I am home. <laughs> That morning, Miriam realizes that the situation may be worse than she initially thought. We woke up at around 5 a.m. in the morning and uh, it was a long, long night. This is where I slept. You know, let me explain to you what this bed is like. It's sticks put together. And then you know that thing that they use on the billboard? I don't know if it's a paper or what, but that is. That has been put on top and some cardboard. So that was my bed for tonight. So I can't tell you what my, my back is feeling right now. So after taking a chai, we have to go and milk because we don't need the milk for the tea. How could I forget that? So I have to go and milk. <laughs> So we're going up changed, just gotten out of my pajamas and we are headed to the where the goats are for a milking experience. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be so good, man. Having gotten used to buying milk in the supermarket, now she is headed straight yeah. to the source. I'm told you can kick me. And this is one that. cup of tea okay. that can kick back. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. I'm not sure if there's any milk coming out. <laughs> or I'm about to be kicked. Oh. And the calf is the other side, so it's like we have to struggle for the milk. I'm scared. <laughs> oh wow, she's doing it so so effortless and so easy. It takes years of, you know, practice. Because in the Maasai community, women are the ones who milk. Ah, a cup of fresh milk. <laughs> Rich in butter and 
<laughs> all this wonderful stuff before they, you know, they remove it from the meal they normally buy from the shops. So that was something. I feel bad that I had to, you know, have its food. <laughs> and I had to fight to get a share of that. I mean, such is life. But that was quite an experience for me. Uh, the smoke, if you're not used to this smoke, um, it's crazy. Oh, I feel like I'm about to lose my sight. Oh. Um, so the breakfast is ready. We went, we milked. Um, the tea is ready, so I'll be serving it to the household. The kids just left for school, so it's just me and Lamiri. And then I will be told what next to do after that wonderful experience. And the car was not even very friendly to me, I would think. <laughs> Preparing breakfast in my house takes about um, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. You know, the here. Oh, it's quite a, a daunting task. You wake up, you have to blow the firewood and light it and all that. Uh, and you have to get used to the smoke. I'm sort of getting used to it by now. I think my eyes are not really watery anymore like it was last night. So now, I think we're going to Nimtoni. That just killed my excitement level, but yeah, I'm told it's such a quite a distance walking to go fetch water, but we have to wait for the donkey to be ready. The good part is I don't have to carry the jerry cans, but... In desperate need of a shower and a drink of water, Miriam soon realizes that there are no water taps or shower heads to rely on. here it took us about 45 minutes and I am scared of the bulls so this is the same water they draw for cleaning and washing clothes I'm told there's a different place where they get the water for drinking because this is not uh, very good I thought it would be such a long such a long walk but 45 minutes not bad for a workout <laughs> for me that was a workout yeah, but that bull charged where this bull is coming. So I'm scared for my life right now. So I'll just move to a safer ground. I don't want to cause disturbance because it, it looks very dangerous from where I stand. She has never had to carry water all her life, and this is one trip she will never forget. Those 20-liter jerry cans can weigh upwards of 22 kilograms each, and these local women have gotten used to carrying them for miles. So we are almost done with the fetching of water and then we'll head home and then after that the cow will be released to go and herd at a far off place and then they'll be back in the evening 
In the Maasai communities, there's a few communities in Kenya, you find them still using donkeys as a means for transport and help around the house. The jerry cans might fall on the way and we don't want that to happen after such a long walk, it's such a hard work. We need to make sure the water gets home full in the jerry cans. So we left going to the well at around 7 a.m. in the morning. So we just, it's 8.45 a.m. So that is about an hour and a half and 45 minutes. Uh, plus the cows took about 20 to 25 minutes drinking. The rest of the times we were walking. It's quite a distance, but it's not too far because in some villages they have to walk for several kilometers to go draw the water. So. I'm exhausted, obviously, <laughs> from the long walk. I'm not used to, to walking that much. Uh, probably I'll get a bath. Uh, that is a sign of respect. I can't give him a handshake. He has to um, sort of bless bless my head it's a sign of respect uh, to the elderly as a as a young woman I can or an older woman in the community I just shake hands with the younger people or people that are considered my peer and younger yeah so I'm learning at the end of a very long day, Miriam sits with her host for a heart-to-heart -heart discussion. Mama waki waki Masai. Lazima wake to hivi. Kwa nini? Kwa nini wezi kiki kwa kiti? Kwa nini kiki kwa kiti? So kiti ni ya waze? Mm. So, in your Akina Mamma, our total. Cover keeping you for your money, I'm there. Okay. Oh. Oh. Nzuri sana. Mm. Unatengeneza? Mhm. Mm Unatengeneza mm -hmm. Oh. Wewe unajua kutengeneza? Ni mm. 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 Kwa hivyo uneka tiyo nina kufendeza, mm -hmm. lakini haina maana tiyo kitamaduni yama ni, ni lazima, ni ile nina kufendeza. Mm. Ndiyo sa ni kitamaduni ya kumasaki. Mm. Kwa hivyo sasa, mm. yana wasa hivyo, mm hivyo -hmm. kisa sisi wa masaki, mm. nisi wa nana mwana mm -hmm. kwa hivyo mm -hmm. Mm hmm. 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 Mm hm
Mamma, <laughs> Na wengi wao wana, wana waze sana sana kwa kuteme hapa wanajihushisha na kazi na gani Sisi kwa biashara. Oh, biashara. Za kuza ngombe ama biashara kidogo kidogo. Okay. So my visit has just come to an end here at um, Lengishon village in Kajiado County. I told you earlier, we're just a few kilometers from Anamanga town, which is the border between Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, it's been quite an amazing experience, and my host, um, Mama Mary, she's very gracious. Um, the night was kind of long because of the discomfort, you know, of the, the sleeping uh, space, but. Um, it was nice. It was a, a new, unique experience. I had to share the space with the children and her, which is um, interesting. Because <laughs> normally, uh, who still sleeps with your parents? Now, at a certain age, you, you move to a different space in the house. But here, I slept with her and the kids. Uh, some some kids and myself so that was something I think my big takeaway from this trip is um, sometimes in the city we tend to take so many things for granted <laughs> I've learned to appreciate every single blessing or opportunity that I, I get to enjoy out there so then I look at their lives and funny they they love it because for them it's 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 a way of life um, sometimes it's a choice, sometimes not. But they've embraced it and they're happy and they're just, they're just full of life and you know, and from where I stand, I, I look at them and I'm like, no, this is hard work. This is, this is different, this is difficult. But them, they, they are okay with that. So uh, that has opened my, my mind and my husband a different level of respect, even for the women in this community. Because a lot of these stories, I just hear them, watch them on the news, or read about them. But from my visit here, I've, I've developed a, a, a new level of respect. So knowing what I know now, out of the experience I've had uh, from this visit, it will be nice to just come back, uh, you know. And should I come back, I'll, I'll tag my, my son along. I think it will be <laughs> an interesting culture shock experience for him. And uh, my heart is more open now. I came here a bit closed-minded, but that is, you know, afraid because I didn't even know where I was coming. But now um, I'm happy. Uh, I came, and I will take the love. Um, they're so loving and they're so wonderful people, and you see the joy in their faces. And you go back to Nairobi, you see this sad faces on traffic, all this rushing, you know, going here, everything is just relaxed. Just go take the cows uh, for drinking water, come back, and it's just, it's just easy. Well, except if you have to walk for long distance, and come. but it's just relaxed compared to city life. It's hassle and bustle, just rushing to nowhere sometimes. So I didn't know I needed this quietness that I've experienced since I came here. It's been very calming and very um, zenning for me. So I would definitely want to come back again. But of course with my son, I would want for him to really experience this. So I'm actually looking forward for a possible trip here, God willing. She is indeed very thankful for the opportunity to experience another culture and way of life. Mm -hmm. 
kwa upendo yenu mnionyesha na zangu na natumai nita mtarudi tena siku nyingine asante sana haya toa nenda salama mungu atafiki cha vizuri nenda salama amen asante asante ndio nikusifu asante and this is something she can always remember Be sure to join us next time as we take on yet another journey to the heart of Africa and thank you for watching.